Let me uh, take the opportunity to present um, my dearest Dr. Erika Mendoza, uh, Professor Duplex, uh, performing duplex ultrasound and diagnosis of leg veins. Uh, she also advocate of a Chiva procedure. And uh, if you haven't done Chiva procedure, you just attend one lecture of Erika Mendoza, you will become a big fan of chief a procedure would happen in, in us in Asia. Uh, she is uh, the, also uh, the president of the German Phlebology Society, and she is a winner of the award of the best German phlebologist, uh, 20 best, uh, best German phlebologist. Uh, she came first 2018, 19, 22, and I nominated her for 23 and 24 and we're very eager to have her and uh, to enjoy the knowledge of my dearest professor uh, Tobias Hirsch. Uh, after that, I will uh, indulge him with his uh, well-deserved introduction. So the mic uh, to you, and we are all eager to learn from you, Dr. Erika Mendoza, and uh, please accept our apology for too many questions will happen when you are working with the duplex. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for, for this kind introduction from both of you. I would like to start showing the room and the setting. So please, if you could enlarge the Erika Vein Clinic uh, image. So I show you, I don't know, it's, it's large. Um, this is the place where I work. My patient is standing on, the, on this uh, podest and I have the device here. I use my, my probe with the hand and I have a second screen here to preserve my neck from being always like looking like that. And when I do um, endoluminal treatments or form sclerotherapy, I have the patient on this uh, um, bed and I have a third screen over there again for my neck. I'm an old woman. And then I, I can treat very relaxedly um, everything. So now um, I would like to bring the patient into the room. Yes. Um, things happen like always. I had a lady with uh, refluxing great saphenous vein, which took, which is ill with Corona since two days. And I had to look and I found a lady. She has a small saphenous vein reflux, but she's very lovely and she's very skilled in, 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 in workshops. She's always with me since Good evening, <laughs> since lots of years and doing online and present workshops. And I will just start having a look at the veins. And uh, if somebody has a question, please don't hesitate. So I don't know if you see the legs pro properly. Uh, Dr. Uh, Erika, can you just uh, wait a second? Uh, yes. Khaled, uh, can you please pin uh, uh, the screen of Dr. Erika Clinic so the audience can see it in a big screen? There is a, a three dots on the top corner right from the from the. And I share the screen of the ultrasound. Yes. Oh no. This yeah. Okay, so this lady has small varicose veins on the back part of the of the uh, calf. She has no edema, no discoloration, and this is why I have her as a wonderful model for my courses since lots of years because. There is no no progress in the in the disease, but I will start looking at the uh, at the great saphenous vein junction. I will start the right groin. It's always good to have some jelly. And this is the classical Mickey Mouse. Oh, yes. Sorry. sorry. This is the classical Mickey Mouse with a small ear because the great saphenous vein is healthy. Yes, this one. This is the artery, the deep vein, and the ju junction of the great saphenous vein. And if you put color, you can see the flow in the artery. I don't know why the image... I, I will make another preset. I'm sorry. Oh, looks like... Okay, you see it properly, yes? Yes, I can see it okay. very well. The gray, uh, gray image is very well. Yes. Then I, I always say this is the the phlebological artery investigation, which is like um, only in cross section, 
And this lady has three spikes. So for the first moment, I think this is okay. I move to the deep vein and I make the classical thing, which is calf compression. And mm -hmm. I elicit a good anterograde flow. But then I will make another thing. I'm going to see a heben. This is the toe elevation. I don't know if you see it. toe elevation and down. Wieder runter, genau. Mal warten kurz, das muss nämlich wieder auffüllen. Und nochmal heben und runter. So the toe elevation and the calf compression elicits a good anterograde flow in the groin in this lady. Of course, we can make Valsalva, but in standing position, this is not so kind. So I will go back to color. And we see that the saphenofemoral junction with compression of the calf has no reflux, but we see a vessel here. And we have to discern if it is an artery, the one crossing there. No, this is very interesting. I didn't expect it. Last time it wasn't there. We see and flow towards the uh, probe, which is red in the image and um, going up here. And this is a drainage from the epigastric. I, I'm now tilting the probe to the uh, tummy. And I see this is the vein coming from upstairs, the epigastric vein. And there is yes. a reflux longer than one second, of course. And of course, this is a flow in the correct direction because obviously the epigastric vein drains to the leg, but it should flow only one second. Okay, so your problem. definition of reflux is anything more than one second, not more than half a second. Uh, for me, it is more than one second, yes, because um, okay. Labropoulos in his wonderful work examined healthy persons and notice that everybody of the healthy ones has less than 1.5 seconds. But if you make studies, like, like I published, on people yeah. with reflux, it is always like two or three seconds, but for sure more than one second. And this okay. avoids you from treating people with healthy veins, if you know what I mean. Yes, I know what you mean. This is a very good advice for people in order not to uh, treat from half half a second to one second, this is debatable, but definitely more than one second we all agree upon. Thank yes. you. And, and and another interesting thing is that sometimes you make, um, you make like, I, I will do it again in the deep vein. Uh, in some patients, there is a difference between the compression of the calf and the toe elevation. I'm going to him. So if you don't have a reflux with one of both, but you have a varicose vein, you should always test with the other, with the other, um, there, there you see me, <laughs> with the other uh, modality, just to make sure that there is not a problem of the muscles or a problem of the calf compression. Because in some patients, you have no reflux with calf compression and you have a reflux with the total elevation. But we will come to okay. this just in a second. So we have, we have this flow now, which is a reflux from the epigastric vein which is in the correct direction because epigastric vein drains down to the uh, to the confluence with the great saphenous vein and then to the deep vein, but it is long lasting. Yes. Uh, I will make a little Valsalva, hol sie mal tief Luft, halten die Luft an und pressen und weiter atmen. And astonishingly, sometimes the Valsalva doesn't work in the pelvic reflux, but now there is again a long lasting reflux in the um, epigastric vein. And this is very interesting because this lady has a reflux from epigastric vein draining to the deep vein, yes, yes. but not into the great saphenous vein. Yeah. The great saphenous... You think this might be a sign of uh, pelvic congestion syndrome? No. The pelvic congestion syndrome is when you have a reflux and also symptoms. She has okay. just the pelvic reflux. She has the pelvic. It's the difference between vein reflux in the leg and chronic venous insufficiency. This lady has vein reflux in the small saphenous vein, but no insufficiency because she has no skin discoloration, no edema, nothing showing that the that the veins are not happy. You know what I mean? The difference between. I know what you mean, but what is the source of this reflux in the epigastric this, vein? The Where is this coming from? Reflux is the pelvis, of course. But yeah. to have a, uh, she has not a pelvic congestion syndrome because this implies that she has symptoms, as okay. to my knowledge. 
to be a surgeon yeah, is better yeah, that's, for that's, it's a good mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good advice not to diagnose pelvic congestion syndrome in asymptomatic no, patients no, no. just on duplex criteria this is very important she has often women after pregnancies or on the right side after a um, if you had an operation, surgery on the ovaries or the appendix, uh, the skin was cut, and the, sometimes then you have uh, a pathologic drainage. But in this case, and this is the thing I think I want to show you, this drainage, this pathologic drainage, is physiologically drained to the deep vein. Here you yes. see the junction, the very junction, and the blood flows inside the, the um, femoral vein, and then leaves the leg through the uh, common femoral vein. And this is perfect. So yeah. this pathologic drainage leaves the leg through the femoral vein and there is no flow towards the leg. And this is what I always say when we treat pa patients with the um, reflux source in the pelvic system, like her, and we close, this is the epigastric, this is the junction, yes. this is the saphenous vein. If we close the saphenous vein below the junction, we leave the drainage from the refluxing pelvic system through the ostium and don't generate a neovascular genesis because we cut all these vessels with a, with a cross-sectomy. This is why I say when the people has the reflux from, from the epigastric or the circumflex or the pudendal vein, better not to touch the groin surgically, but only close below. Yes. This is um, yeah. that's a very point. good advice. Yes, yes. because now, it's compensated for the reflux. Yes. Now we have the classical thing we always have to do, like a compression, to demonstrate that the artery is not compressible, but the deep vein and the saphenous vein they disappear on compression, and this is because they have no thrombus. And always, if you do a procedure, you have to demonstrate earlier that there was no thrombosis before you started treatment. And now we are going to the more in, more interesting part of the leg. I'm going to turn around. And somebody has to tell me when I have to stop talking because I when I run out, I run off, out of time always when I and when we I are enjoying, ultrasound. enjoying your skills in doing uh, <laughs> duplex ultrasound. Okay. Now just to show the, the comparison between both legs. This one is the left leg and this oh, one brilliant. is the right leg. And yeah, we can see the see... big vein in the symptomatic leg, yes. Yes, this one is the small saphenous vein of the left leg, which is healthy. And this one is the small but enlarged saphenous vein on the right leg. And if you allow me another observation, just by the way, you see this is the fascia, the fascia saphena, the muscle yeah. fascia. And here you see another vessel, which is a yeah. very often found deep vein accompanying the small saphenous. And the yeah. problem sometimes is, on the other leg, she has also one. If this one is refluxive and the superficial one is healthy, it is easy to confound them. But you yes. can't treat deep veins with superficial treatments. So you have to be always aware that there is this fascia and that saphenous vein runs inside the fascia duplication. But now let's go with this small saphenous vein. I, you find always, you find the small saphenous vein at the level of the... Uh, of the of the back of the of the calf in the proximal segment okay and now we go upstairs and to look for the junction here you yes. see appearing muscle veins muscle veins gastrocnemius vein the tbl posterior vein all going together and having at the end one i go a little bit deeper one one venous vessel here and the artery and now we have to sort out, and by the way, here is a Giacomini vein. I am above the knee fold. Here is the Giacomini vein. And I go down again, and here I have one vein emerging. The vein gives muscle veins, and then is the small saphenous. And if you remember Kajati, um, uh, not Kavetsi's um, um, division of, of uh, saphenous veins, you remember perhaps that he divided, and I think this is very important, he divided two situations. One, when the small saphenous vein goes into, this is a long longitudinal. Here is the merging point of both. Yes, the deep vein and the small saphenous. And further down, a muscle vein goes inside the small saphenous, draining yes. into the small saphenous. So if you would 
follow the ancient rule to say you cut the saphenous vein at the junction to the deep vein, you would also close one muscle vein. I go back into transversal, common, common vein, one vein only, popliteal vein. I go down. This is the small yeah. saphenous vein. And immediately after, it divides into muscle veins and one, the small saphenous vein. And if you make it like you should surgically, you would close it here. Yeah. And you would close these both. So it is very important to be aware before you treat the patient, to be aware on ultrasound if there is this situation, because then either you do it endoluminal or you do it surgically, you shall not close the vein. So you preserve any this. muscular veins. You have to <laughs> respect the muscle veins, yes. You have to close oh. here. Yes. What happened? What happened if accidentally one of them is being closed? Does patient have, become symptomatic in the cuff muscle? I have I have seen patients with muscle vein thrombosis. Well, I mean, it is not yeah. it is not uh, periculous because there is no option to be a pulmonary embolism because it's closed. But it okay. is very uh, it is hurting. It is hurting a lot. So now we go on with the reflux we have talked about. I go back to the bigger image okay i make a calf compression release and you see a long first a quick one and then a long lasting reflex and yeah. if you see here the seconds it's half one and a half two and a half three and a half seconds yes yes now i make i make another kind of of make uh, i'm going to see toe elevation and back Nochmal und runter. And you see, in this case, the calf compression is better. Okay. Yes? It depends yeah. on the person, on the situation. I don't know why. And one thing I want to demonstrate, even though in this case the reflux is very obvious, is my loveliest maneuver. Einmal bitte hinlegen. Auf geht das? Ja, ne? Und einmal bitte, ich stelle mich mal davor, damit man es von der Kamera aus nicht sieht, einmal das Bein. We elevate the leg of the lady so that okay. the veins go empty. And this maneuver, okay. the dependency maneuver, is best in patients where you see, hmm, there is a vein, it could be varicose, but there is no real reflux. And you will see the difference now. Einmal wieder runter, ich stehe vor Ihnen. <laughs> einmal wieder hinstellen und umdrehen. She gets up and turns around. And I go through the to the vein. And you see it is filling and filling and filling and filling and filling a long time. Yes. Yes. And this maneuver yes. is very good in patients where you think there should be a reflux, but you don't see it. Because it is not Excellent. dependent on anything, not on my hand, not on the muscles. If the leg is empty and there is a valve not, not closing. You see, it is still the same reflux. So this is really a good way to sort out. This is the queen of all the, the master of the reflux uh, provocation maneuvers. Because if you yeah. don't have a reflux after this maneuver, there is no reflux. Yes, it is. Excellent. That's a very nice maneuver. And uh, I, I would suggest to call it Erika Mendoza maneuver. For no, 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 no. It's, no, no, no. It's published as dependency maneuver. It's very funny because in the same year, we didn't know each other. Chris Latimer and me published it in different places. And I called it orthostase maneuver in German, and he called it dependency maneuver in English. So it is not only my thing. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I, I will personally call it Mendoza maneuver, but anyway. Okay. <laughs> but this is the only one reliable always. Okay. Okay. It's, it's now... a very good provocative maneuver. To yes. be sure, it you did show it quite obviously that yes. it is very very clear, and uh, sometimes you don't detect reflux even yeah. if you're examining patient at the end of the day, and uh, yes. it is different. But when you do this provocative test, you can definitely diagnose it very easy. That's definitely a very nice different. information. Thank you. Yes, very welcome. And this now is the is the junction. We can have a look at it in longitudinal view, which is always very didactical. So this one is the the popliteal vein and the artery below, yes. And then yes. you see in the deep vein a reflux. And now I ask you, has the lady a deep vein thrombosis in the post-thrombotic syndrome? 
What do you think? She has a reflux in the deep vein. I'll yes, show you. It, it looks on the color, but you need to confirm it with um, power angio and with uh, waveform analysis, uh, with okay. Doppler sampling. Uh, we need. We don't rely on reflux on just a single color image. Okay, I will show you something. Heben Sie mal die und runterlassen. Suddenly, she has no longer a reflux. And I lo loosen my finger. Nochmal die Zehe heben und runterlassen. Ah, this is the problem with the maneuver in her leg. The problem is this lady has a reflux in the deep vein because the deep vein empties the blood, drains into the saphenous vein. Okay. So the source for the reflux in the small saphenous vein is the deep vein. Okay. And this is why between the next higher perforating uh, valve and the um, opening of the small saphenous vein, the blood is going down and draining into the small saphenous. And as yes. in the moment you close the small saphenous, the reflux will stop in the deep vein. Okay. Was that understandable? I mean, it's understandable, but how come the pressure, because you know the deep system have, a, have very high pressure and the subcutaneous system have little pressure. Yes. So how it can fill from short to deep vein, because pressure-wise, it should be the opposite. Yes, but if you make a compression, yes, have a look. Uh, I'm trying to center in longitudinal. It's not so easy sometimes. If I make compression and release, it's in good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I I go to I, I just just a moment. So if I make compression and release, I have a reflux into the yeah, reflux. small saphenous yes. vein, and yeah. the blood. And the blood, which is now filling the small saphenous vein, where does it come from? Um, it should be coming from tributaries of the short saphenous vein in, in mm. the leg. No, no. Or, I or is it coming it... from the deep system? Yes, I push the blood upstairs now. Wait. Yeah. I push it upstairs into the deep vein, yeah. and then it comes back from the deep vein into the superficial, the superficial vein. yes yes now we can you see it very I mean? clearly with the color yes i know what you mean yeah and if i close the perforated the tributary and then i open it you see when i close it now yes. there is no more mm -hmm. reflux and when i open it there is a reflux so the yes. deep vein at this segment is draining into the superficial vein and this is yes, not a deep true. reflux but it is the source of the reflux of the superficial vein okay yeah this is i can see it very clear to yep. think about. Now I make a longitudinal because we have here a valve. I go back to a little higher resolution here. Oh, now there is there is the valve. You see this this little segment here. Yes. You, you see that this is the the shape of the valve. It is very thin and tiny. Yes. But the vein is a little bit enlarged because there you have the the starting uh, here. Yeah. Here and here the starting of the walls. And if yeah. we go further down, and often often these wall segments make this enlargements. Yes? Yes, yes. I go to the longitudinal and we go further down. Or maybe but the normally, enlargement is making the valve incompetent. Uh, here is another valve. Oh, no, here is a here is a tributary going out yes. the vein. We will examine it. Yes, yes, very clear. What is your definition of perforator? Do you think of three millimeter as as your definition? Uh, this was a tributary. This was not a perforator. I I have oh, a look. Okay. If I find a perforator, this was a tributary because it went. Wait, wait, wait. It, it leaves the it leaves the fascia over there. Yes, it yes, goes out. Yes. So okay. it is a tributary and it is it is uh, refluxing. It is red. Yes. Okay. I go down for for sure. We find a perforating vein. This is another tributary going to the other side. Yeah. Very clear. Yes. And then we have a look. We have a look. We have a look. There is a perforating vein because it goes into the muscle. It doesn't yes. pierce the fascia. This is a tributary and the tributary gives 
here it goes through the fascia. Yes, into yes, the muscle. very clear. Yes, yeah, very clear. Yes. Okay, and then we have a look. This is so difficult in these cases to define the direction because they are tortuous and it doesn't look like very much involved. Yes. And there's no much reflux have... coming from it, yeah. No. And if we have a look at the diameter, I measure the diameter next to the piercing point. I mean, like here, for example. Yeah. But um, I the pathology of the perforating vein for me, it's not it's 2.5, it's not depending on the diameter, but on the flow direction. If the flow direction comes from inside to outside, it is a pathological one. It looks like here we could have a better image. Yes, yes, very clear. I will leave the time management to my dearest Dr. Mahmoud Al Ghabban because I'm enjoying your duplex. Uh, I can stay for hours, so I think uh, <laughs> he he will uh, he will give us uh, the when we time to change. But uh, it's very very skillful to get this picture. Uh, I want to yes, show everyone yes. that with you your are hand. Very you... welcome to visit me and see me. <laughs> so let let us have a look if one of those goes into the fascia here, and to see a. a properly draining perforator. This is the, there, there it pierces the fascia. Yes, yes, that. very clear, yes. Yes. And, and you see that the most of the segment is blue. And here yes. you see very, very clearly that this is a draining perforator. Yes? Yes, yes. The blood drains. And this is the, for me, this is the important thing, not if, not the dry, the diameter, but Making sure it is draining and not refluxing in the in the diastole. Yes. Yeah, this is very a... nice. Important. Yet yeah, you rely on the direction of blood rather than yes. the reflux in management of the Yes. Yes. That's excellent advice. And uh, please extend our thanks to your very kind patient. Yes, uh, of course, of course. She is we can very give her kind. An applause. And then yeah. I, I think we are finished here. Yes. And I go back okay. to the screen. Is that okay? Yeah. Or any that's questions? Okay. Yes, we'll, we'll okay. see. Uh, if you put your question into either the comment section, we are delighted to uh, delighted to review them. So uh, I will go uh, for, uh, shall we go for the poll questions or we take some question from the attendee? Uh, Let's let, let have the discussion on with the experts. Also, the Tobias Harish can also give his input. I think yeah. it's also really important. Excellent. Excellent. Just a moment. Can you start my video, please? At this place. Okay. Okay. Yes, perfect. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Yes. So let me start by taking uh, the chance of having um, our eminent professor, uh, Tobias Hirsch. What's your opinion about this uh, excellent uh, short saphenous uh, scanning? is always learn from the best. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I always try to do it uh, a very similar way. Um, but I think uh, one of the most important issues is for everyone, especially for those who don't come primarily from the um, from the um, uh, vein uh, examinations that we need uh, that we need a patient in a, an upright position. This is how it works. The, 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 yes. the problem I'll be back just in a second. Pain uh, uh, diseases is always gravity. And gravity yes. works always. And we have to use the gravity in order to find out where is uh, the disease from. We don't treat um, um, we don't treat uh, veins. We treat patients, but we have to see um, where are the causes, um, which are the um, the causes of uh, skin changes, of um, of uh, ulcers, and something like that. And uh, you, you only can uh, find this out um, uh, if you use these uh, maneuvers. If you, uh, I think I was very impressed how it worked in this um, uh, in, in this presentation um, with the uh, dependency uh, maneuver. Um, Excellent, and I learned it from Erica. 
how to respect the muscle branches going into short saphenous vein. We as a surgeon, before the doublet go so advanced, we used to do a lot of ligation of short saphenous at the junction of the uh, popliteal vein. But uh, I learned from Erica Mendoza that muscle branches should be respected where it is draining. It can give you complication, venous thrombosis of muscle branches that can even can go up to PE. So uh, I did learn that from Erica. Do you have the same experience, Tobias? Yes, um, there is also um, an interesting uh, phenomenon in, um, in in Germany. We uh, we always uh, also watch uh, the muscle veins. Uh, it is also very important uh, when it comes to uh, to uh, DVT treatment. Uh, but we know from uh, international trials that the um, lower leg um, muscle veins don't play uh, such a great role but i, I think it's always uh, uh, important to watch them because you can have dvt uh, after um, having treated um, the uh, small saphenous vein after having uh, done um, sclerotherapy and if we see um, calibers like this like a thumb um, we we have to be uh, clear that uh, these uh, are uh, vessels then also can um, can produce um, thrombi for um, very uh, um, a big uh, pulmonary embolism and so um, I think uh, you must not uh, underestimate uh, the role of uh, the, the muscle veins That's for. Stiff. Uh, for DBT um, uh, treatment, but also um, as uh, as a as a cause of uh, reflux, as a cause of um, um, leg vein uh, disorders and uh, complaints. Yeah, excellent. I have a question to Erica. Do you do um, classification um, uh, or quantization of reflux as grade one, grade two, grade three, or just uh, reflux more than one second, and this is all what you need clinically? Um, good question. <laughs> I I always rec uh, um, uh, record my uh, my images, so I could go back and have a look at it. Uh, but uh, for me, it is reflux if it is longer than one second. And then I think there are so many confounders on the reflux length, like the time passed since the pr previous maneuver, uh, if it's summer or winter, and so on. That I think the length of the reflux is so semi-quantitative. So if you really want to have an accurate measurement, you can only make the uh, recumbent and standing and wait how many seconds it takes to refill. Or yeah. like Christina Janere made, she made this Vasalva with the with the uh, thirty millimeters pressure uh, exhalation. Or you have to make a calf compression with a device. So to have always the same. But yeah. outside this study situation, the reflux length is really semi-quantitative. And I was completely convinced that the reflux velocity played a role in the in the reflux source. And I tried to demonstrate it, but I failed. It is completely random. So you can't yes. say to my eyes nothing for uh, about the clinic just by the shape of the reflux. The clinic, you have to ask the patient. Yeah. <laughs> There's Excellent. no other... Yeah. Yes, that's no, excellent. I, I got yeah, yeah, excellent. I, I got a very nice question. Uh, he said, "Would you be so kind to repeat the dependency provocative maneuver, which I call it the Erica Mendoza maneuver for reflux?" Oh, yes. So, if you can tell it, because everyone is interested to know it. Yes, I'm so sorry, but the patient left. I'm so sorry. I no, thought no, I was right. You can verbally, no, verbally I repeat, say I what you do. I explain it. I explain yeah. it. You put the patient. Normally, this is very well for veins that are very tiny you have a slim vein and you think but there are tributaries that are refluxing and you don't see the reflux source usually i do this for a great saphenous vein which is not so large and i stand yes. there and say hmm, i think there should be a reflux that's test so i put the patient lying down i elevate the leg for 20 seconds and then um, for people doing it the first time sometimes it is better to mark with the adding or a, a, a pen on the leg where you have to put the probe because sometimes yeah. until you find the place the reflux stopped, yes? Yeah. But you yeah. then ask the patient to stand up again and then 
the veins that had run empty with the maneuver, the leg elevation, the, the, the leg is empty. They yeah. come on standing again. And it, it is like sometimes two or three minutes of reflux. Reflux yes. running, 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 and you can investigate everything. Yeah. If you have large veins, the reflux will uh, finish earlier because they are quicker filled. But if yes. you have tiny veins, it will take long and long, and then you have you very comfortably can investigate the leg. Yeah, you know this explain. I done a, I done a paper about ten years ago from our nurses that we used to measure reflux in the morning and reflux at the evening at the end of the shift, and we were surprised that they are not refluxing in the morning but refluxing grade one and grade two in the evening. So your explanation, uh, we were doing it without knowing why. We thought, well, maybe the valve would get exhausted at the end of the day. But uh, this is very nice test, and I would recommend it to do it routinely to exclude reflux. Yes. The, the, the thing is, I sometimes, I make more investigations in summertime and more treatments in the wintertime. And I sometimes have patients with an obvious reflux in the summer, and then yep. they come for the treatment of the of the great saphenous vein and they have no reflux with no no chance, not with yeah. a dependency, nothing. And then I don't yeah. treat the great saphenous vein. I treat the tributaries and often the great saphenous vein uh, remains uh, competent. But this is the thing that depends on the time you are standing, on the temperature, on the sports you have done yesterday, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> This is very no, no, that's that's very true. Yeah. Um, what's your opinion, Tobias Hirsch, about uh, this matter of uh, the the refluxing uh, situation regarding if you have an empty leg of blood or you have a full leg full of blood? Because I think especially when um, when the uh, um, venous hypertension is um, extreme, in these cases it works very well because uh, especially in these cases. It is um, uh, frequently not possible to um, to uh, induce a reflux uh, with the usual um, distal maneuver, and then you only have to know that there is an opportunity to make the vein empty. Uh, it needs a little bit coordination. The, the, the patient has to be able to do that. It's not always um, uh, the case. Um, but in this uh, case, you need assistance uh, in your room, and um, we do it um, th the same way. But uh, to be honest, it's um, it's not every day that I uh, that it's necessary to do that, and that's why I have one uh, interesting question from Doctor Al, Al Zakari. He wants to know the best method for confirmation the reflux, distal augmentation uh, or color flow and uh, respirational um, variation, and I think. You cannot answer this question with one fit for all um, answer. There is, uh, it, it might be the same patients, a patient where you can um, uh, you can uh, induce a, a reflux uh, with the, today with this uh, maneuver and the, the next day with another one. And it depends on the day. In the morning, uh, as you already uh, mentioned, in the morning uh, the, the situation is. Um, better than in the evening because uh, gravity works all the day and so uh, you, you see uh, more reflux uh, in the evening. So as we know that the people suffer from leg pain, uh, severeness of the, of the legs uh, in the evening when they come back from the shift and not in the morning. And so there is a um, um, a connection between both and so there is no unique answer which is the best um, reflux maneuver you have to try out all and you can invent a new one excellent excellent uh do you have a comment uh, erica uh, no i'm completely with him but yeah. just okay. to say the 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 respiration augmentation works in better when the patient is lying down yeah i really use this i normally like tobias said I always investigate in standing position. Also, yeah. when I want to exclude a thrombosis, because especially in the calf, you find the veins better in the standing or in the sitting position. But yeah. if I have a person with a large limb and it can, he, the person comes to exclude a thrombosis and I don't yeah. see any thrombosis in the leg, yeah. then I put them lying down and compare first the velocity of drainage, because when you are standing, the, the blood will, the first minute it will just flow, 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 flow out of the leg. And then after a minute or two, you start having the 
respiratory augmentation if everything is fine. But yeah. you won't have it if there is a, a central thrombosis. Yeah. So the only moment I use this respiratory things is when I want to exclude indirectly uh, yeah. uh, iliac vein thrombosis. So sometimes yeah. you have people with, with 180 yeah. kilos and you can't have a proper look. And then this indirect sign is very, very valuable. Yeah. I, I just want to ask a question. A patient, once I have seen, she she was uh, having a scar in the abdomen, a recent scar from cesarean section, and she couldn't cough. And she had superficial thrombophobitis in the leg. How can I confirm reflux at the phenofemoral junction? I can't do valsalva. She can't cough. I cannot press the abdomen or even press the thigh. But why do you need Valsalva in that moment? You can make a calf compression. You can put in. Could she stand or couldn't she stand? No, she couldn't stand. No, she was yes. lying down. She said she can't stand. Then the next question, why did you have to know in that moment if there is a reflux? You aren't treating the reflux. You are treating the, the thrombosis. Oh, you can, so just in this situation, exclude DVT, that's it. Yes. You can investigate <laughs> the reflux when the thrombosis is gone. Yeah. Okay. You that's, always that's have a very to good ask answer. the questions that have a consequence. And of yes. course, when I have a patient with a superficial vein thrombosis, I make the workout because I then yeah. explain them how to treat later on the legs. But yeah. if you can't do it, in that moment, it has really no consequence, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah. because in, in our reporting of duplex scan, we have an item reflux in that area. So sometimes we feel a bit committed to complete our reporting is, is to mention. That's yes, right. but if the, if the saphenous vein is closed with a thrombus, yeah. you won't see a reflux anyway. Exactly. Even though, exactly. so you, you okay. just write kindly, we will check on that later on. <laughs> oh, that's very that's a very nice reporting. Okay, I will take one last question. From uh, we seem everyone is excited about your uh, your uh, very nice uh, clinical skills with the duplex scan. Here's a question from Sion uh, Pokrel: uh, Do we treat asymptomatic significant reflux without varicose vein and chronic venous disease, but just dilated truncal veins? That's a very good question. Yes, you have seen this lady is being my model since seven years. She okay. had, she had, she has a large saphenous vein, and now which I, I showed you the valve, and this is nearly a centimeter. I forgot to measure it. I'm very sorry for that. Um, okay. And this is now the time I'm starting to think, just because of the risk of the superficial vein thrombosis increases with the diameter of the vein. But she has simply no symptoms. She has no edema, no cramps. She has no skin discoloration. She has no itching. So I do only treat patients when they, I mean, of course, when they have a reflux. This is not always the, the case in Germany. <laughs> Sometimes they treat patients without a reflux. But I treat them only if they have a reflux and either they have symptoms yeah. Symptoms you obviously can cure with a compression stocking, yes, because yeah. often you have cramps for another reason, and it's yeah. or or the patient is very discomfort, feeling discomfort with the visible veins. So if the patient which is, has, which oh, is I, also I, symptomatic, I, yes, cosmetic it's asymptomatic, symptoms. but they say, okay, I can't go to the swimming pool because look, look at my leg, I, I feel ashamed and so on. Then I explain to them that we don't know how long it would take her or him to develop symptoms. But we know that if we treat in five years, the possibility of having a retreatment is 50%. Because this one we know. We don't know how long it takes to get chronic venous insufficiency if you have a reflux. But if the patient says, I can't live with the vein, okay, then I treat it, of course. Yeah, excellent. So another question uh, from Dr. Hassan Hussein. In the case showed ablation of short saphenous vein up to the junction of the gastrocnemius vein. And if if surgically ligated below the muscle junction to prevent thrombosis of the muscle vein. Yeah, I had the same question. So can we do ligation below the muscle as respecting the muscle vein? Would you advocate this? Yes, of course. Yeah. We, we, uh, we did. I, I, I prefer since since the endoluminal treatment is, is there. I prefer doing the small saphenous vein endoluminally because it is very elegant and you don't have to, it is a, 
it is more difficult to treat surgically the small saphenous vein than the great saphenous vein because there are so many variables and there is a nerve and so on. Um, but we did it for many years, the crossectomy uh, surgically, and we always respected the gastrocnemius veins if they were there. It's 50%. 50% of them have no, and 50% have gastrocnemius veins draining to the small saphenous, and then you have to respect them, in my yeah. eyes. Excellent. We have another beautiful question again from Dr. Nasir Al Zakari. He said, "Can I use varicose vein for bypass or critical limb threatening ischemia or deep venous arterialization? Is is it usable for us as a surgeon? I would like to know yes, your opinion definitely. and Tobi's opinion." So, so I, uh, you want my opinion or yes? Yes, yes, definitely, yes. So definitely, I think until a diameter of nearly one centimeter in the groin, which means like seven millimeters in the in the thigh, you can use the vein because they recover. And I, I know not everybody is fine with chiva, but if you do chiva, you demonstrate that closing the reflux source, the vein recovers. And we are just making a, a revision about among the chiva group, how many of the people treating not only veins, but also arteries have already used a vein uh, uh, a for, formerly refluxive vein after chiva, but I'm convinced that you can use a not too much enlarged refluxing vein because the muscles of the saphenous veins are very, very strong and they are able to rechange. Imagine you take a saphenous vein and put it at the coronary artery bypass where the pressures are completely different and they adapt. Yeah. So yes. also a, a slightly adapted, uh, a delighted um, saphenous vein should adapt, I'm sure, for this, but I don't know if there is literature using very uh, refluxing. But after Chiva, there is, we are putting together the literature and we have already 20 cases that, that this worked. Excellent. That's uh, that's uh, really one comment. A very, very good. Yes, please, Tobias. One, there is one very important issue. It is to have this question. This is uh, what, what we have to do. Is it possible that we need this vein for um, not only for critical uh, limb ischemia, also for uh, uh, coronary uh, bypasses. This is the question uh, to be asked before you ever treat um, uh, a saphenous vein, especially if the diameter is not that big. So um, probably uh, the varicose vein disease is uh, the smallest problem the patient has. Yes, yes, that's, that's absolutely cool. right. We always worried as a surgeon that the vein will rupture if he's refluxing, if he will get an aneurysmal dilatation. And sometimes we prefer to take radial artery rather than deceased vein. But I think this information is, is not, not totally verified. I think the opinion of Eric is that if you have small reflux, with good muscle wall, with no obvious disease, you can use. And this will dramatically change. But I think we need to go to some animal models and yes. work about that because, yeah, what but do you, yes, please, now, Erica. Yeah, now you're telling this, I remember a case, but this is 30 years ago, because my first husband died 20 years ago and he told me the story. They had a patient with a, varico with a reflexing great saphenous vein and a closed um, superficial uh, superficial uh, femoral vein which is now no longer called superficial but I mean a closed femoral vein and they just took the cross, the, the junction put it on the artery and took the distal saphenous vein as it was the valves were not working and put it to the popliteal vein and they had an in C2 bypass they used because the vein was refluxing and it yes. worked perfectly so you, yes. you don't have to turn it around. You can leave it as it, it is, as it is if the valves are broken. So you can yes. use the benefit of the refluxing vein to make the bypass. 